I really did a number on my hair with that with this last at-home haircut. <laughs> hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Drew and this is my channel where I make videos about improving my mental health. It hopes that it inspires you guys to improve your mental health as well. So if you guys didn't notice, I did take the last two weeks off. I was planning on only taking one week off and then it turned into two. So I'm so sorry about that. I really felt like I needed to give myself that time off. And as much as I felt really guilty about it and super intense anxiety about it, I realized just how much I needed it and truly deserved it. It was definitely self-care. So now let's move on to today's video, which is five ways to practice self-compassion. So in case you didn't know, self-compassion is being able to be understanding, accepting, and loving towards yourself. Many people have that ability to extend that compassion to other people, but often struggle with extending that scared the shit out of me, <laughs> but often struggle with extending that same compassion to themselves. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys do to practice self-compassion. Please be sure to leave your ideas in the comments below for other people to get inspiration from as well. The first thing I want to mention is repeating a mantra that resonates with you. Personally, I have repeated it's okay to not be okay for so many years now. That one still resonates with me. It may change over time, for you. It depends on what you're currently going through and what your future self will be going through. One of my very good friends actually introduced me to a mantra that I'm now repeating a lot because my anxiety has been really bad lately, which is your brain is being mean to you. The first time my friend said that one, it really just hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, I can just tell myself that whenever I'm feeling anxious because it's valid. It's true. My brain is being mean to me when I'm being really anxious, especially around social situations. So shout out to Flame for that one. <laughs> so there's a ton of mantras that you could look up, but here's just a couple of recommendations that I could think of. And these are also mantras that I tend to repeat to myself when I feel the need to. So one is one day at a time. I'm not a burden. I think there's a very large amount of people that struggle with the idea that they are burdens and I am one of them and it gets better. But those are just like a tiny little pinch out of the millions of mantras that are out there that can work perfectly for your situation and really help you to get through your situation. Now it might feel weird at first, especially if you're saying it out loud, but it's something that you just kind of get used to over time. You can start by saying it in your head or just always say it in your head if that makes you more comfortable, but sometimes it can be nice to just repeat the saying out loud, maybe when you're at home by yourself or you know somewhere where other people can't hear you or even just whispering it under your breath. It Kind of just depends on what makes you comfortable, but I go back and forth between saying it in my head and saying it out loud. I really quickly just wanted to remind you guys that it is also so incredibly normal to feel emotions come up when you are repeating any of the mantras, because sometimes we have internalized the absolute opposite of what that mantra may be, and it may help us to unlearn whatever we internalized while we're trying to reteach ourselves. So oftentimes when I'm repeating, I'm not a burden, to myself. That one really, really gets me because I have very much internalized the feeling of being a burden. I'm trying to unlearn that internalized ideology. Number two is to explore your emotions and validate yourself. I think it's very, very natural for humans to feel invalid in their emotions, but I promise you that your feelings and your emotions are 100% valid. Sometimes it might just be good to remind yourself of that. Plus there is a very good chance that if you have went through past traumas where people have told you your feelings aren't valid, you may have a hard time unlearning that, but it's so incredibly important to explore your emotions to better understand why you may be reacting a certain way. Number three is to write a letter to yourself and or your inner child. So if you experienced trauma as a child or maybe didn't get the right support that you needed at a certain time, you may still experience similar emotions that your younger self used to feel. Writing a letter may help with healing and being compassionate towards yourself. When your inner child or current self really needs it. And you can also write a letter to your present self about kindness, validation, empathy, or anything else that you may need to hear. Now writing these letters can definitely be very emotional and challenging, but if it helps to be more compassionate to yourself, I think it's probably worth it. Number four is checking in with your body. Sometimes even if we really, really want to do something, it feels emotionally and even physically
physically exhausting to do it. If you have the ability to put off whatever it is that you need to do until your body is ready and without being hard on yourself, that is a great way to practice self-compassion. So a lot of times when it comes to checking in with our body, we may not really know what we're in the mood or not in the mood to do until we're actually doing it. So if that means doing a task that you've been putting off for a while or even just getting dressed and putting on day clothes or throwing a bit of makeup on, doing your hair, just remember that if you decide halfway through whatever you're doing that you don't feel like doing this, you don't have to keep going if you have the ability to avoid doing that task. A lot of times when I am checking in with my body, I'm checking in to see how sore I am. I do deal with a lot of body pain, especially in my hips and knees and ankles. I do often experience pain in my shoulders and like tension migraines. So if I'm dealing with any kind of body pain, I typically avoid doing strenuous activities Activities, like working out, any kind of heavy lifting, I try to, you know, really listen to my body and forgive myself in not being productive that day because I know that the more I do, the more sore I'll get or the more uncomfortable I'll feel. If I'm in the mood to, I might do a nice yoga session that's like dedicated to stretching the specific areas that I feel sore that day, but sometimes that can be really uncomfortable for me. If you're not really sure how to check in with your body, my way of checking in with my body. It's just kind of estimating my physical discomfort as well as how much energy it would take to complete a task that I'd like to get done that day. Most of the time we all know our bodies well enough to know if doing a certain task that day is just not in the books for us. Even if you're not necessarily someone who deals with physical pain but you're just not feeling like moving, that's totally valid. If you're in the middle of a workout and you just don't don't want to finish, don't force yourself. You can, you can force yourself if you really want to, but if you don't want to force yourself, don't. If you're unsure as to how to check in with your body, just do a little bit of Googling and see if you can find anything that resonates with you. These last two weeks of me not uploading was definitely me listening to my mind and body. I had to really focus on being compassionate and trusting myself to know that taking time off as much as I didn't want to was the right thing for me to do. Checking in with your body may also mean that you don't feel like getting out of bed one day or you don't feel like showering. Whatever it is that you're going through, just remember to be compassionate towards yourself and that whatever you're feeling is valid. Don't be too hard on yourself. Number five is daily slash weekly self-care. If you guys are familiar with my channel, we all know that I'm a big, big advocate for self-care. I don't even think I do self-care enough for myself, but I know for a fact that I deserve it. So depending on your schedule and what self-care means to you, performing daily or weekly acts of self-care is so important to include in self-compassion. And taking the time out of your busy schedule to perform those acts of self-care is so, so important. Even if that just means taking 10 minutes to journal, five minutes to focus on your deep breath, maybe doing a little bit of stretching, making yourself or treating yourself to a delicious and nutritious meal. Self-care for you could be all of the above or none of the above. It's completely personal to what feels right and good for you. It's so, so important to remember how good self-care is for you and how vital it is for self-compassion. Last thing I wanted to mention that I don't consider mandatory for self-compassion, but maybe for some is moving your body. Whether that's a full body workout, a yoga session, or even just a five minute walk outside. Just be sure to check in with your body to make sure that it is in fact what you need and that you'll actually be up for it. If not, don't be hard on yourself. Fill yourself with as much compassion as you possibly can and be as understanding as possible, just like you would for any of your loved ones. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it gives you guys some inspiration on how to have more self-compassion. I also hope that you guys didn't miss me too much during my little break, but don't fret, I will always come back. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button because it really does help to support my channel, as well as hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified about future videos that I will be making. And lastly, be sure to follow me on all of my social media. There's always a pinned comment in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!